there's so many things I love about men. I love your self-confidence. Um, when Martin and I play golf, I love how far he thinks he's going to hit the ball. <laughs> we'll be standing on the tee, and I'll say, why don't you swing? He'll say, I don't want to hit that thing. It's the sun. <laughs> He just loves watching sports. He'll watch any sport. He even watches poker on television. Have you ever seen poker on TV? To me, it always looks like lunchtime at a methadone clinic. <laughs> and of course, baseball. But uh, I can watch baseball. I just have to be in the right frame of mind. I have to be asleep. <laughs> and he even watches golf on television. That's not the most exciting sport to watch on TV. Did you know that if you tape golf and then you play it back in slow motion, there's no difference. Did you know that? <laughs> Men and women, we enjoy different things. Women, we love to talk. You know who we tell? We tell our hairdressers everything. They know everything about us, don't they? And you know what? We don't even know their last names. My husband reveals nothing about himself. Martin went to his barber, has medium length brownish gray hair, came home with a shaved head. I said, what happened to you? He said, oh, my barber thought I was someone else. I said, why didn't you tell him who you were? He said, because I didn't feel it was any of his business, okay? <laughs> Men and women react differently to situations. If a woman sees a mess, she cleans it up. If a man sees a mess, he announces it. Rita, the dog just threw up at the top of the stairs. Okay, I'll be there in a second. Try not to do anything about it. <laughs> Men and women, we have different beliefs. Martin believes in the sink fairy. He thinks if you put a dirty dish in the sink, the sink fairy washes it. I said, did you ever notice that whenever I leave, so does the sink fairy? He said, yes, why do you take the sink fairy with you? <laughs> Men and women, we say different things. Here's something you never hear a man say. I feel bloated. <laughs> Here's something you never hear a woman say. Hit me in the stomach. You'll never hear two women say to each other when they accidentally meet on the street, oh, asshole. <laughs> Here's something you'll never hear two men say to each other after a business lunch. I'm going to the bathroom, wanna come? But guys frustrate women, we do, because guys compartmentalize. Guys break up their lives in different segments. Women hate that because they feel excluded. And women don't want to feel excluded. You know, guys put their, their friends here, their work here, their family here, their mom here, their kids here, and their wife here. Women hate that. That's why women hate for us to have fun without them. Is that fun? Why can't I go? I like to have fun. If it's so fun, bring me. What's wrong with a little fun with me? God forbid you ever have fun without your woman around. You always have to play it way the f*** down. So, how was the bachelor party? <laughs> sucked. <laughs> I was bored to tears with all those tits. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get away from those tits. I was dying to come home to you to hear how your day was. <laughs> Let me get these sparkles off me. Hunter gathers, you ladies of the gathers, women are multitaskers. Women are capable of doing two, three, sometimes five things all at the same time, but yet incapable of just doing one thing. Women need two or three to feel in their groove. Now, multitasking is just a nicer way of saying schizophrenic. <laughs> Guys are single taskers, single focus beings. We do one thing, pretty good at the one thing, but only one thing, which frustrates women to no end because women can do so many things. You know, women lose it on us all the time. It's like, did you not hear the kids down here fighting and breaking? Did you not hear any of that? I didn't hear anything. I'm making a 
Yeah, which what happened? <laughs> we have kids. When did this happen? <laughs> this is sh I need to know. <laughs> and women can't turn it off, and I'll leave you with this. Even during sex, women are still thinking about all kinds of other things. <laughs> Guys, if you're just learning about this now, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it's a big blow to our egos. No matter how well we think we're performing, got that one arm up there, <laughs> sucking in your gut. <laughs> got that sexy look on your face. Doesn't matter, in her head, she's thinking. <laughs> what am I gonna wear at that baby shower? <laughs> I'm thirsty. What did I eat tonight? I feel gassy. <laughs> he better finish soon. <laughs> or I might have to fake one. <laughs> did he lock the front door? <laughs> He's not complaining about those Christian Louboutin shoes now, is he? <laughs> Well, it's important, guys. I always remember during sex, I always give a little slap on the ass. Like, hey! Focus! I'm inside you right now! Take care of that other sh later! Thank you so much. I'll tell you this, though. That's when you realize that your wife is your best friend. Right? I have best friends. They won't have a baby with me. We, we made a human together. And she did that for us. And that's how you know that your wife is your best friend. And I looked at that little boy and I thought to myself, one of these days he's going to leave. And I'm going to be stuck with her again. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> till death! <laughs> Not till death. Well, we die first. We do. Men die first, ladies. It's not the notebook. We don't hug and die. Like, not... <laughs> In real life, we die first. And then, ladies, years later, you die. Right? It's true. Everybody in here has a grandma. <laughs> At some point, grandpa goes, fuck it. <laughs> I'd like to be in heaven by myself for a little while. <laughs> you know, all the grandpas are in heaven having a good time, and all of a sudden, pff, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I tell you not to eat the salt and vinegar potato chip. <laughs> well, Brenda showed up. I love what I do, man, and I love that you guys come out. I love that you call your wife's Captain Evil like I call mine. <laughs> I love to watch you laugh, man. That makes me happy, you know. You guys like to watch me, I like to watch you. I'm like, yeah, I do. I like when you laugh, you hit your wife, you know. <laughs> and your wife looks at you when you laugh too hard. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing, though, is sometimes uh, after my show, these girls in their 20s, and they've never been in a real relationship, you know. But they'll come up to me and they go, you're my favorite comedian because your jokes are so funny. And I'm like, jokes? <laughs> this is a documentary. <laughs> so, it's true. So here's, to all you women in your 20s who are single, listen to me, because I want you to be happy faster. Lower your expectations. <laughs> you're not a princess. Your father lied to you. <laughs> I'm going to marry somebody rich. Mm, probably not. <laughs> but if you really want to be rich, rich in the things that matter, find a real man, a family man, a man that wakes up every day and goes to work. You will be happy and you'll be rich. And I know you young girls are like, oh my God, I want that. But can he also have abs? No. <laughs> Men that work hard don't have abs. 
We have one app. One, one big app. Oh, it's hard. But there's only one. And I know all you young girls are like, Ugh. I'm never gonna sleep with a man that looks like that. Yes, you will. <laughs> Maybe not tonight. But eventually, there's gonna be a fat, hairy, sweaty, balding man on top of you. He's gonna have sex with you for a good three minutes, strong. Women get obsessed with romance. I think it also comes from the nicknames we get growing up. With my dad growing up, called me princess, right? Princess, he drilled into my head as a kid that I'm a freaking princess, and then I grew up and I got into the real world and I realized that no one else was on board. <laughs> the whole princess thing, right? Princesses don't lose their virginity at Lollapalooza. That's just not... <laughs> I think we need to start calling kids things to prepare them for real life. You know, get in the car, rehab, let's go. <laughs> Women get called things that make them obsessed with romance. Guys get called things that make them obsessed with sports, right? You guys get called, like, champ. Ugh. <laughs> Sports. You guys are so obsessed with sports. You guys can't even refer to increments of a relationship without referring to sports, right? First base. We got to second base. Like, you don't see women running around referring to increments of our relationships through things we like. It's not like last night, me and Mark. Ah, Chanel purse. <laughs> you guys are so obsessed with sports that you guys will wear jerseys for teams that you're not even on, <laughs> but you think you're on the team, you'll be like, yeah, last night, I guess we just didn't score enough. <laughs> last night, I guess we just didn't play enough defense. We, the Redskins don't need you. <laughs> okay, that's like me watching Grey's Anatomy in scrubs. <laughs> The show is over, being like, oh God, we just could not save that guy. I don't know. <laughs> you guys love sports so much, you guys can't even throw your trash into the garbage normally. <laughs> you guys have to shoot your garbage across the room like it's an NBA basketball game. Like, you don't see women living out our dreams with our trash. I don't take like a used gum wrapper, put it around my ring finger, and be like, Brad Pitt and I are thinking about the fall, so. <laughs> you guys love sports so much that you guys, I feel like you guys do things you would never normally do just because they have sports terms associated with them. Like, I have a feeling the only reason you guys like being single is because it's called playing the field. Because <laughs> you guys have convinced yourself that you're out there like, I'm shooting and scoring with these chicks. I'm shooting and scoring. Uh, I'm such a, I'm playing the field. I'm so great. No, you're sitting home alone jerking off to porn on your couch. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Which I don't like porn. I do not like porn because you love porn? What do we like going on? <laughs> what do we have going on up there? Porn, yay porn or no porn? Yay porn. yay porn. Oh God, I like you guys. DC, do you guys have like political porn? Like kind of <laughs> like, oh look, it's I don't know any politicians. My parents are still together. My folks are still together and I hope that's a good template for me. Don't clap. You understand why? I've known my parents my whole life, obviously. <laughs> but it's only until recent that I start seeing things in them that I never saw before when I was younger. My mother talks to my father the way it takes us the third time to tell somebody something. Now, I know that doesn't make sense when I say it like that, okay? But let's say, miss, you and I are dating. And this is the first time I say this to her. I go, honey, have you seen my keys? Well, you don't answer me. Where's the second time I say it? Hey, honey. Have you seen my keys? You still don't answer me. Here's the third time I say it. Hey, are you deaf? Have you seen my Keys! So you see how I slowly build up and ramp up to that last one? With my mom, there's no build up. That last one is her first and only one. Hey, face! Oh my God, it's morning. What? Jesus. My father's retired. He does not wear pants at home. Tidy whities all day long, because he knows at least eight times a day he's going to get scared out of him. A little sprinkle is going to come out. He's like, I got to change my underwear again. This is driving me nuts. Nuts. 
We're fishing off his back deck one day. He lives in Florida. We're fishing one day. My mom comes over and yells at my father. Like, I love you or whatever. And uh, <laughs> my father looks at me, he goes, Steve, you just can't win. <laughs> and we laughed. Minute goes by. One minute, nobody says anything to each other. I don't know if the next thing I heard out of his mouth, if he's saying it to himself or to me, but after 60 seconds, this was the very next thing I heard him say. You'll never win. <laughs> what would have made that moment perfect is if my father fell in the water, I saw a few bubbles, and I never saw my father ever again. <laughs> I realized in that moment, my father has no, no fight left in him. He's just broken down. He wakes up getting yelled at. He goes to bed getting yelled at. He's like Seabiscuit before he met Toby McGuire. It's just broken. I swear to I think once you get married, women treat the house like it's a restaurant and they're the manager and there's no customers in it. And every time they look at the guy, it's like he's a, he's a waiter. Just, it's like, get up, do something, clean something, stay busy, go, Jesus. I visit my father, he's always in the garage, he's hammering. I go, what are you hammering? He goes, nothing. Single tear. I realize in that moment, my father has no fight left in him, okay? I do, and I believe this. I believe that women and men have a different definition of what a fight is. I think a fight to a woman is emotional, and I believe a fight to a man, physical. When we hear the word fight, UFC, a hockey game, it's going down in the parking lot. I'll tell you this, I've been a part of fights. I did not even know that I was in a fight. My wife's like, Thud, do you remember last night we were fighting? I was making a hot pocket. What the are you talking about? A real fight to a woman is any time she cries. That's the peak of emotions, okay? A fight to a man, at least a fight to me, when I know I'm in a fight, any time I've got to define to her what yelling is. That's when I know, oh, now I'm in a fight. I'll come home, I hear some crying. <laughs> so crazy. What's wrong with you? What? I just walk in the door, you're crying. Why are you crying? Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling, I care about you. I'm trying to figure out why you're crying. See? <laughs> See, you don't even recognize it, do you? You're yelling right now, okay? It's your tone. <laughs> that tone is young, so please stop doing it, all right? What the <laughs> are you talking about? <laughs> that. That. Stop yelling at me, okay? I'm not f***ing yelling at you. I'm just trying to find out why the f*** you're crying. Just get away from me. It's like there's a scary monster in this house, okay? And I'm scared for my life. Just go. Just come here. No. There was this windmill move that doesn't stop. No. Stop. Don't. Just tell me what the What's wrong with you? I would, but you keep yelling. I'm not yelling. Yes, you are. That's yelling. This isn't yelling. This is yelling! Guys, we don't have emotions in public. That's not what men do. If you feel like, I'm not saying don't cry. I'm saying if you're gonna cry, leave the bar. We're trying to have a good time in there. Leave. Like that's your leave kind of thing. Go. A bar is not a place for emotions. You go to your car, turn on Bob Seger, cry like a man. <laughs> this dude was, it was pretty obvious what was going on. Everyone in the bar saw it. This dude had a crush on a chick. She thought they were just friends. She showed up with another dude. He was hammered. And he just went full psycho. Just, bring <laughs> it! She had no clue. She's like, I don't, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Dudes don't handle infatuation well, ladies. It's not an emotion we deal in often. Men deal in three emotions, 
98% of their lives. Men deal in happy, angry, or confused. <laughs> yeah, and I know there are women in here going horny, but horny is happy and angry at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we're happy we got a we're angry we got nowhere to put it. Otherwise, dude's dealing three emotions. Happy, angry, confused. If you give us any other emotion, our first instinct is to run it through those three emotions. <laughs> Sadness, watch your man, watch his team lose the big game. He will go through all three emotions in about nine seconds. Big game's over, they lose. <laughs> it's a good year. It's a great year, you know. I didn't think we'd get this far. <laughs> What happened? What the f happened? We were so good all year. <laughs> Women deal in all emotions all the time. They don't feel them in their real life. They watch shows with them in them. <laughs> Women will watch shows that make them cry on purpose. They look forward to that shit. They call their friends and come, hey, you wanna come over and cry on Wednesday? <laughs> Yeah, I do! <laughs> you know what those shows are? Those shows are emotional CrossFit, is what they are. <laughs> those are just women doing emotional reps. They're just in there doing sadness squats and love burpees. <laughs> when women get crushes, they're, f they're light years ahead of us. They've seen all the movies. Guys are blindsided. We're just like, I just think about it all the time. <laughs> Women are just reading defense. It's like, no, it's fine. It's just, it's summer. It's fine. <laughs> Here's a good test, fellas, for the difference between infatuation and crazy. Infatuation is when you think about a girl a lot, you wonder what she's doing, you kind of wish you were involved. Crazy is when you go find out. <laughs> on a date to go get coffee. How cheap is that? He's like, hey, do you want to like maybe go get some coffee later? I was like, sure, you know they have really good coffee? This place is called a Morton Steakhouse. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> I love a little coffee with my lobster, let's go. <laughs> and then I'm such an idiot that I went on the coffee date, it was at like four in the afternoon, and I showed up to go, like I went up to the counter to pay for my coffee, it was like a dollar seventy or something, and I go to pull out my wallet, he cuts in front of me, he goes, no, 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 no. I got it. <laughs> well, you're gonna get some coins from your freaking jar, is that how you're... <laughs> Women are cheaper than men though, it's not even that we're cheap, we just never expect to pay for anything. Right? So much so, we have mastered the art of something that I like to call the pump fake. <laughs> which is when the bill comes to the table, we'll just stick our hand in our purse. <laughs> just move it around for as long as we have to until you guys sign the check. We're not grabbing anything, we're just shuffling shit around. <laughs> just getting stabbed by pencils. If it's a small purse, we'll just do that. And if it's a clutch, we'll just finger bang it as long as we have to. That's when you put a finger in someone's vagina. <laughs> I actually don't even know. I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't know if the guy's supposed to pay, if the girl's supposed to, if you're supposed to split it. I was just, I just got out of a four year relationship, just, just recently. Yeah, thank you. are happy about that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm single, you wanna do this right now? <laughs> this is a water bra, this is false advertising, but otherwise, I'm like, what are you, a pedophile, is that it? <laughs> but no, I did, I just got out of a four year relationship. It was hard because what I learned after I got out of the four year relationship, I learned that women, we're not given the skills we need to survive in the world without a man. I learned this because right after we broke up, I got a brand new car. Four days after I got a brand new car, I filled it up with diesel fuel. <laughs> Now, I always love this reaction because all the guys in the audience are always like, oh, God, and all the girls are just like, so? <laughs> like, I didn't even know what diesel...
diesel fuel was. I pulled up, the regular was out of order. The surprise, I was like, oh, I'll just fill it up with diesel fuel. And there was a green button and a green. I was like, oh, it's probably better for the environment because it's green. And then you guys are probably wondering how I got the nozzle to fit because a diesel nozzle doesn't even fit in a regular car. I jammed it in there. I was like, I'm self-sufficient, God damn it. A mile later, my car was a ball of fire. But women are not taught practical information like this. We're not taught to live in reality. We're taught to live in our imaginations in a fantasy land, right? I remember, it's true, growing up, I used to have imaginary tea parties. I would, I would put imaginary tea in imaginary cups and drink them with my stuffed animals. That's crazy, okay? <laughs> like in any other universe, that's just schizophrenia, right? And the problem is it carries into adulthood. Like guys, you ever get in a fight with your girl and she's much more pissed off you than she should be? And you're like, whoa, that argument escalated really fast. <laughs> it's cause for the last week we've been having a fight with you in our imaginations. <laughs> And in our head, you said all the wrong shit. <laughs> so by the time we see you in person, we're like, oh yeah, well that's not what you said last week in my mind. 